Good evening. Good evening. Very nice to see all of you here uh, together on this Ash Wednesday as we ready our hearts and minds once again this year to enter together into our London journey. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. I invite you to join me now in singing this evening's gathering song. It is in number 592. Just as I am without one. First reading is from Joel. Hold the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness.
and blackness spread upon the mountains. A great and powerful army comes. Their light has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent, and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants, at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests and ministers of the Lord weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword <coughs> among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, in your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Mosh me through and through of my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned. And by what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified when you speak, and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me, and you have no wisdom deep within. Remove, remove my sins with hyssop. And I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take down your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders, and sinners shall be restored to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you take no delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Be your sign with all the departures. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the appointed sacrifices, in burnt and whole offerings. Then young bulls shall be offered upon your altar. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he said, At an accepted time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. 
Now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished and not yet killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you are able. And 
Um, it was leading this particular summer ecumenical vacation Bible school, which is awesome. You should come to vacation Bible school. Everybody should bring all their friends to vacation Bible school too when we have it here. I was super excited because there were probably going to be about a hundred children coming to Vacation Bible School for that first day, and that was going to start on Monday, and it was Sunday night. And my car, which was this old, kind of rusty Buick at this point, was packed to the gills with stuff for Vacation Bible School. Toys! and art supplies, and papers, and books that I was going to take, that I was going to take to the, to the vacation Bible school site that evening. So it would be all there come Monday when we were supposed to start. And I did my inventory, and you know, we were missing things. Good thing there was a shop called Hometown. Not anymore, but there was back then. Over in Columbus, and I was pretty sure they would have my things. So on this Sunday evening, I got in my Buick, which I say was packed with gills, so imagine if you see my car, how packed this car was, right? I got about halfway to Columbus, Wisconsin, and there was a large vehicle. I don't remember quite what it looked like. It looked kind of gray in front of me, and so I started to slow down, and we almost stopped. I found out later that that was a horse trailer. But nobody told the lady driving the van behind me. And so she crunched into my Buick, going at highway speeds. And my car did exactly what it was supposed to do. It started to fold up like an accordion from the back. I don't remember. But others that came upon the scene told us some things. First thing, they found this pastor's Bible on the center line of the road open to the book of John. <laughs> Don't know what that means, but it was very important to the paramedic that found me later and returned my Bible to me. That I knew that. I was told that there was so much paper and stuff and I was surprised at the children all over the place that it looked like a confetti factory had exploded. And I was told that when the paramedics arrived at the scene, which was almost immediately, that they were concerned that they were driving up to a good day. But I'm fine. Right? I don't remember it. I did initially because I journaled about it. And I kind of remember remembering, but I don't remember anymore. Is that odd and strange? But there are some things I remember about later. <coughs> I wish I didn't remember them resetting my shoulder at the hospital. I wish I didn't carry the memory of what just one dose of trauma doll does to you as a human being. Man, they put that in me and I was miserable on this hospital. It helped to set the shoulder though, I think. They said it was one of those neck guard things and ruined my perfectly good shirt. Because they cut it off. That's the night. My parents live in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. If you know your Wisconsin geography, that's like a little over a two-hour drive from the hospital in Columbus, Wisconsin that they took me to. And um, somehow, I'm pretty sure this accident happened at about 6 o'clock at night and my parents arrived at the hospital at about 7.30. <laughs> With a second vehicle to leave behind, because our daughter is a pastor, she cannot miss night in one day of ministry, especially this vacation Bible school happening in the coming Monday. And luckily, we had decided that vacation Bible school was going to happen at lunchtime. So this crazy lady got up Monday morning after having this 
you're watching it, we're the head priest, and do you know what I did? You're not going to believe it. You probably were. Who can guess? I totally called up the company that sold us the materials for Vacation Bible School and calmly explained what needed to happen and explained to them why they needed to send us digital files so I could read you all the printing that morning. I proceeded to take my mother's car to the store and replace all the art supplies that we needed for that day. Make sure that we had everything that we needed and right at the time. And I was there by lunchtime to sing the following song with the children. I'm jump, jump, jumping for joy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was weak. And I drove my car to the tow yard where they had, well, I drove my mother's car to the tow yard where they had taken my then vehicle. And only then did I get some pictures and I'm taking what had happened to me. I was cleaning out the stuff I could out of that vehicle, and I found myself sitting back in the driver's seat of the car. It was so comfortable and warm and peaceful. And I felt so loved and cared for. And I just never, ever, ever wanted to leave that drunk car from the tow yard ever again. Something that happened in that vehicle changed these women. Yeah? It changed my perspective on a lot of things. And yeah, I went from being like this super high energy pastor, so you remember when I was an intern? To like being like a regular high energy pastor, which I know kind of like difficult to picture me with even more energy yet, but trust me, she was there. But I now live my life feeling keenly a chance, or a sense of like second chance, right? Dead lady walking. I should be a goner. But I'm Long story, right? And yeah, I should went and say, Yes, seriously, it's a long story. You were in it. I helped you. <laughs> Nash Wednesday. And here tonight, every year on Ash Wednesday, we as faithful Christians remember that we live on the brink of life and death. We remember that we are always waiting for an ambulance at the side of the road, at least spiritually, without help from Jesus. We are with the God that sees us as dead men and women walking in blood and makes us alive with him again. We are a people of second chances and renewed hope. And we are people through our own baptism say that we have died to our old selves and we rise again to be new people, workers with God in the kingdom. And that perspective that we have as people who know that we ought to be post, who are alive through the Lord anyway, changes absolutely everything. Things that used to seem super important seem less important to me now after that experience. Those things those moments that are life-changing help create for us unique and special perspectives about 
all of the things that are happening around us. And so that's why we every year as Christian people take time and set it aside during Lent to remember exactly. We are a people that has been changed by the work of God in our life already. Even if we haven't had the accident that causes us to know it's happening. We are living, forgiven, and redeemed. And that is a very special thing to remember as we come forth in a little bit this evening to receive the mark of ashes, to remind us each that we are host. We're dust itself. And to dust we shall return. Mortal. Unique. But very alive in this world. And that's I forget what happens next to this Ash Wednesday. Oh, what a song. <laughs> Ready for a song? Our hymn of the day today is hymn number 601. Stranger when in dust to me.
church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is therefore renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy and communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with the creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life that our Creator meant for us to have. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I am able to invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent. Self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. I invite you to rise as you are able. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another, and before the whole company of heaven, that we have sinned by our faults, by our own faults, by our own most grievous faults, in thought, word, and deed. And by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and mind, and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Yeah. Have mercy on us, for that. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have, have mercy on us, O God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have, have mercy on us, O God. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to share the faith that is in us. We confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who will come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. You may be seated. God, you created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you forward to receive the imposition of ashes if you so desire. You are dust and to dust you shall return. You are dust and to dust you shall return. You are dust and to dust you shall return. 
you are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust and the dust you shall return. You are dust and the dust you shall return. You are dust and the dust you shall return. You are dust and the dust you shall return. You are dust and the dust you shall return. You are dust and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall return. You are dust, and the dust you shall Thank you. 
accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior. Bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and the world's need. You call us to return to you, steadfast God. Renew a right spirit within the church and cleanse the hearts of your people. Strengthen those who proclaim your gospel in word or deed. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You care for all people, loving God. Heal any who are scared by violence, addiction, or trauma of any kind. Comfort those who grieve and bring relief to any in pain. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. It is you who gather this assembly of Almighty God. Unite us in serving our neighbors and working for justice. We pray for caregivers and people who are hospitalized, in treatment, or recovering from illness. We pray especially for Donna Holtz, Mark Bevin, Bridget Wells, Wayne Weisenhaus, Jim Henry, and Clance, Albert Severson, R.G. Rogers, and all those who suffer because of war and disaster. Hear us, O God. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. We continue with our talk. our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism, that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast for self-indulgence, and above all, that we might find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
into the world to serve God with gladness, be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good, render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.